you ready? Are you freaking ready for chest and shoulders? I know for a fact I am. I've just been slamming electrolyte packets all day. Feeling particularly hydrated. So, this should be pretty fucking good. You know, the only factor that really messes with me in terms of the quality of my lifts now that I'm, you know, dieting down, obviously it's not going to be food. You know, all day I'm in a, a depleted state. I don't get to just eat as much as I want and have like a ton of energy just flowing around. So, just by transitioning from, you know, bulking up to cutting down, like your strength in the gym will take a minor hit. But the enlightened lifter knows that's just part of the deal. So what will really mess with me and determine whether or not I can get a solid pump, have a good lift, don't feel like trash, is, well, obviously sleep, I guess that goes for both. But, you know, being hydrated, that is something that I think everybody is slacking off on. You know, I can't remember the last time I've even had, like, just cramps or even, like, a headache. And I, I'm not insanely, like anal about making sure I get like a gallon of water a day when I'm bulking up just because I'm constantly you know drinking stuff and you know drinking water with all my food whatever because I'm always eating so I definitely get enough in but when I'm cutting down you know I only get a couple of meals well okay I say a couple like five <laughs> it's still a lot but it's a uh, it's a bit more infrequent right so I'm not just constantly getting in liquids with my meals so I always have uh, have the jug full, Gatorades, love the Gatorade Zeros. Honestly, it's, it's not even really a crazy source of electrolytes, but stuff, stuff like that, it is slightly better than just water. But a dedicated electrolyte pack, that's, the, that's what you want to get. Like the, the Silo 9, kinda, that's got some aminos too, that's pretty good as well. So, feel fully hydrated, fully rested. Um, I'm sauned up, because when I did the cardio earlier, sat in the sauna for like tw almost I think maybe 18 or something minutes that felt pretty good I don't really think there's a you know when I go into the sauna after I do my cardio it's not like I'm thinking about it in like a guru style sense of like oh this is gonna I just kind of like it, it just kind of feels good to, to sweat a lot like that so that was a couple of hours ago I stopped at sheets and I got a protein shake and a bag of Skittles. So I've not eaten a ton of food today. So that that little, let's, literally that was the quote unquote pre-workout meal like two hours ago. So 56 grams of carbs. Well actually more like 70 including that protein shake. 42 grams of protein and about five grams of fat. So, I mean again, obviously based on <laughs> fucking ingredients I just referenced, I'm not freaking out so much about the ingredients per se, right? What I really care about is those macros. You know, I've got 250 grams of protein to get in throughout the day from dedicated protein sources, meats, dairy products, fish, eggs, stuff like that. You know, I don't count the protein in like bread and whatever. And I got 50 grams of fat, 250 grams of carbs. I'll kind of play around with those. Like if I go over that fat limit, that's fine, I'll just cut the carbs down a little bit, right? So it'll sort of balance itself out. Because really what I'm aiming for is that 250 grams of protein per day, right? A little more than a pound, you know, a little more than a gram per pound of body weight. And then I just want to stay under 2,500 calories total. So that means I've got 1,500 extra to play with. I wouldn't mind if I had like 150 grams of carbs. No, no, 150 grams of fat. But then I'd have to cut the carbs down lower to compensate. Because I'm looking at those two sources as, you know, just energy sources. And fats just happen to be a little bit more dense. So, enough of that. Let's actually talk about the lift. Chest and shoulders. Well, not really the complete shoulder. Just chest, side delts, and rear delts. My, uh, my front delts are developed enough. I want... Just in an overarching kind of statement, I want my arms to get bigger than my shoulders. So I'll still hit them when I'm cutting down, like in the split. But once I start bulking up, I chill out on shoulders a little bit just because they're kind of ahead of everything else. But chest is probably going to be a couple different kinds of incline pressing. Um, 
I'm not really feeling Incline Barbell right now, though. I think I want to start with Incline Smith. Or maybe I'll even start with the Incline Hammer Strength Machine. I never start with that. So I guess I'll just have to see. I, I don't really want to do Incline Dumbbell at this gym because the benches in the heavy dumbbell section, I don't really love them. It's just kind of a weird feeling. So I'll probably stay away from that. But after a couple uh, different incline pressing movements and some flies, chest will be fully pumped. And then, you know, chest is the main point of the workout. Like that's where I'll probably be really going the hardest. I mean, I'm doing chest first. But shoulders will be more so about a pump just because I won't be pushing so much weight. It won't be such a physically exhausting muscle group for me. And then I've got calves at the end too, because I didn't, uh... the way I've been doing calves now is just, if they're not sore, throw them in at the end of the workout. So it's been a little while, because I kind of went on like a two and a half month calf hiatus. So now they're actually getting sore, but you know, as time progresses, my calves will just get less and less sore from each day of hitting them to the point where you know, I could get a solid calf pump, lift up, like, have some real good burning sets, and then the next day my calves won't be sore. And I think your calves are used to some daily stimulation. So I think enough of this little bit of chit-chat. Let's just cut to the, uh, the first working set for chest. All right, so after a relatively thorough warm-up of some cross-body cable presses just to flex my pecs, some push-downs, a little bit of rear delt activation, and then doing one plate for a few, two for a few, three for a few. Three plates in a 25 will be a solid opener. Like always, as many reps as possible. Whew. Oh. Okay. That was good. <laughs> Might have been a touch too heavy. Let's drop down to three plates. <laughs> I fucking barely racked that shit. Oh my god. Yeah, three plates will be a, a little better. I think this is just... I didn't push it too far, but this is pushing it. This is not really a... This isn't really a tip, more so just an observation. I love pressing when there's a mirror in front of me. So I can actually see what's going on. Dumbbells, barbell, smith. The mirror... I don't know, I just like it. I don't know why I thought that was worth mentioning. But let's jump into the next set. Holy shit. Oh, that's not even fully racked. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Let's do that same weight for at least one more. One more, 
Let's do two plates into 25. Three plates is too much. I think that's enough of this. Let's go do, um, uh, let's do some incline hammer. Whew. I could not really understand the logic of wanting to start with a lighter weight and work up during your working sets. It just doesn't really compute to me. Once you do your warm up, that means that should be the freshest and strongest that you are in the whole workout. And in that state, that's when I want to load my pecs with the most amount of tension possible. So I want the weight to start at the max after a proper warm up. I can't stress the proper warm up part enough. And then decrease because I'll just get more and more fatigued and fatigued throughout the workout. That's just kind of how I feel about the matter. Similar premise with those Smith machine presses. You know, I'm just going to fucking squeeze my chest hard. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Let's just do one more of those. I'm really feeling my chest right now. Like, in terms of my mind muscle connection, I almost feel like I'm in the zone. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was thinking I was going to finish with two sets of pec flies, but I think I'll do one more here with a drop set and then one set of flat pecs that could be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's really all there is to that. So for this last set of pec flies, I'm not going to push the weight to like, you know, as much as I could do for, you know, 10, 15 reps, whatever. I'm going to cut it at 200, so two thirds of the stack and really squeeze. So by the end of 20 reps of, or well, let me do a little bit of a prediction. I can probably do maybe seven ish reps where I still touch my hands, kind of slow control, maybe even pause it for a moment. And then I'll start doing partials, which will gradually and gradually get shorter and shorter on the range of motion until I'm like barely moving, like over here. And then I'll wreck it and we'll be done. So let me pick a good song and then let's see if my premonition comes true, which I'm pretty fucking sure it will. Let's go see what happened. Let's go check the results of those eight sets. Whoever has that gold bracelet better freaking pony it up. But unrelated to that, let's uh, let's just get this pump check going. So there we go. 
Get the exposure down just a touch. Maybe you can go a little higher. Oh yeah. Perfect. So the workout is not over. We still have shoulders to do. But I mean if I'm being real, chest is the main dish. Shoulders are kind of like the sides, you know. They're good, they both make a full meal, but this is what I'm really after. So, oh my dude. Oh. <laughs> that is fucking badass. Dude. What is in there? Snakes? Alright, let's let's just see the whole thing. Let's not stop teasing it. Alright. So this shirt had a collar on it, but it was just asking to get turned into a wide neck. So a little bit of intricate scissor work did the trick. Oh my God, dude, this is, <laughs> this is up there with one of my best chest bumps ever, for sure. And it's on a cut. Dude, those fucking Skittles hit me harder than I expected. Oh my god. Let's get a vacuum going. Oh. Let's loop back around to another most muscular. This is fucking sick. <laughs> Another thing that also is making this pump look extra cool is I have, honestly, I've had like zero solid food today. I had a little bit of a sushi for breakfast uh, when I took my vitamins just so I wouldn't take my vitamins fasted. And then it was seriously just a, a fucking pack of Skittles and a protein shake from uh, Sheets. I'm only at like 700 calories so far. I've got a Subway sandwich waiting for me in the fridge as the... Uh, <clears throat> as a post-workout, that's going to be fun. But, dude, I mean, let's get a little bit of a vacuum, too. Oh, my gosh. I mean, <laughs> I fucking love having a chest pump. It's... I love being pumped all over, but something about chest especially, it's got a special place. So yeah, we're starting to get some fucking uh, ab, no, what are, what are these fucking things called? Oh, bleaks coming out in the woodworks, some... Uh, these little things up here, your uh, your serratus, these little fucking gills, these are pretty cool too. I mean, <laughs> we've got nearly a month left to get even leaner than this, so this is going to be fucking badass. But I'm not really attached to this, you know. I like making some fucking progress. I <laughs> I like when the weight on the scale goes up. Now I have to bring it down a little bit on the cut, just as like a resensitization between bulks so this is cool but when i start getting softer than this it's not really going to fuck with my mind though oh i could definitely see how it could oh my gosh let's uh, <laughs> let's just go do some shoulders this is uh if i sit here for too long the pre is going to wear off So with rear delts, I mean, you can't go wrong with just reverse pec deck or face pulls or like bent over dumbbell laterals like this. I would say this is a little bit more of a tricky movement for rear delts. because I'm doing a face pull, but I'm only using one arm. So if you're not careful when you're doing these, you can just activate a ton of traps and lats. So 
I mean, I think it's worth it just as like a another movement to know. But unless you've got a pretty good mind muscle connection with your rear delts, I'd say probably just skip this one. But I'm gonna sit here and just, I mean, really for shoulders, I'm just trying to get a pump. So these sets are relatively light, squeeze, get a burning sensation, and then do it again another seven times. So I'm thinking one here, and then if I like it, I might do like three more. If I really like it, I might just sit here for the whole reverse, uh, the whole rear delt force in the lift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like these a lot. Okay. All right. So one thing to focus on too, if you ever want to try these specifically, is you're not, well, I'm not trying to move my shoulder back and forth, right? I'm trying to keep the joint of my shoulder in the exact same spot. Because once you start moving it back and forth like this, then you're getting a ton of back activation. So I'm trying to keep my shoulder socket in the exact same spot and just use my rear delt to rotate my arm. That's, uh, that's the cue I'm imagining in my head. But I'm going to sit here for six more. Uh, you get the gist after those two. And then we can cut to uh, whatever side delt movement I want to start with. All right. So, I mean, the side delts, there's really nothing to it. You're just doing a variety of movements where you go from here to here, either loaded by a dumbbell at the side of your hand or a machine like this, or there's a standing machine over there with like the lever arms. I think I'll just do a couple of each. So I think I'll do three sets here, three sets with the dumbbells, and then three with that one other machine. So, I mean, nothing to it, but to fucking burn out, really. Okay. Oh. I'm getting a little bit of trap activation. But I don't do any direct trap work on back. So I don't mind a little. I don't mind a little. If you're doing like a side lateral and you're getting like all traps and like no rear delts, then you've got to rethink your form. But I'm going to sit here for three more. No, no, I'll sit here for two more, and then let's show a set of the, uh, the dumbbells next. This side delts workout is actually going to be just two machines. So instead of just doing the three over there on the seated one, I decided to do four. So now I kind of think I just want to finish with four sets here. So this machine is a little bit funky for me, because if I do both arms at once, it kind of just gives me a weird feeling. I don't really love it, but I do like the squeeze doing one arm at a time. So sure, it'll take a little bit longer, but I just like it. So let's just get four done here. I'll just record the one and then we can go, uh, go check the pump. Should be maybe not as cool as the chest pump. It's hard to beat a chest pump, but it'll be pretty good. Three more like that, and let's go check the pump. Oh. All right, eight sets of rear delts, eight sets of side delts, adds up to what we're about to see now. Usually I bring a tank for the shoulder pump just because I don't really need to see my torso, but I forgot today. So, rare shirtless shoulder pump. Ooh. I'm gonna go do my calves, then we get in the car. All right, and with that chest, shoulders and calves has been completed. 
chest felt freaking sweet. I would say that it was a combination of being very well rested, well hydrated, as well as having 50 grams of simple sugars pre-workout. Uh, I don't know why I haven't, I don't know why I wasn't doing that so far. I've Typically, I usually, even when I'm cutting down, I'll have some kind of little treat just to get my blood sugar up for the lift. Because I don't really notice a huge benefit with like uh, super simple sugars pre-workout in a bulking context, just because I'm perfectly fed throughout the day. But on a cut, I mean, you just saw that. What was that? Three, three plates and a 25 for eight? That was good. That felt good. But also, you know, there's the well-restedness and the well-hydratedness part coming into play. But, you know, even on a cut, man, I don't mind having some sweets. As long as, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still under my calorie, uh, my calorie limit, which I know is a deficit. So, I'm, uh, kind of watering at the mouth right now, thinking about that sub. Because after cardio, I just stopped and got it, because I knew I was going to, I wasn't going to, like, I got it as the dedicated post-workout meal. So, that's going to be about 80 grams of carbs, 30-ish grams of protein, like 15 of fat. Um kind of just an estimation of the protein and the fats because really it's all just coming from that deli turkey and the mayonnaise that they squirt onto it but the longer that you track your macros and the more you get into that kind of stuff you just sort of develop a, not a sixth sense but almost for being able to estimate you know how many carbs and how many fats are in certain things which you know kind of uh that's why it's a little bit difficult to get into tracking your macros in the beginning because you don't have any of that experience. You know, but the longer you do it, the better you'll get at it and it'll just become second nature. But that sub is, uh, oh, and it's been in the fridge for a while too. I don't, it's like, a, it's like cold pizza. I swear there's some kind of reaction that happens when you leave a sub in the fridge for a while from Subway. It just makes it better. It's like, it's aged, but enough of that, so... Tons of incline pressing with chest. I don't, I, for whatever reason, I was just in the zone in terms of the mind-muscle connection. Like, obviously, you know, at this point, I can feel my chest firing in all chest movements. But for whatever reason, today, especially on that hammer strength press, as well as the last, like, two sets on incline smith, like, it didn't feel like, it really did not feel like I was pushing with my hands at all. All it felt like was I was, like just flexing my chest to move my arm you know that's um like as a little bit of a comparison you could think of that as doing like a pull down and feeling yourself pull with your hands versus like pulling with your elbows that sort of thing Every, everybody's heard that kind of analogy but you know i mean the longer you you lift the better you'll get at being able to like specifically flex whatever muscle you're trying to target i am um, I think I talked about this before. I remember I was in my basement. I was doing incline bench with a barbell. So, you know, the home gym. This is early days, early high school. And just out of nowhere, I started to feel like something clicked in my brain where I was feeling my chest flex as I was doing incline barbell bench. It was, uh, okay, I guess it wasn't this crazy. I'm kind of exaggerating, but it was like euphoric. You know, it was like a eureka moment where I was like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the longer you do this stuff, you know, the better you'll get at that sort of thing. Like, you know, popping your pecs, whatever, stuff like that. It just, you just kind of get in tune with your body a little bit more, I think. So chest got fully freaking pumped. Shoulders were looking pretty cool too. I think the shoulder pump was a little bit overshadowed by that chest pump. Uh, even if not visually, just sort of like subconsciously to me. Because that chest pump was fucking sweet. Plus, the lift felt really good. All the movements were just like, oof. Yeah, I was on top of my game today. That was nice. So, I definitely enjoy that that's the, you know, that was the situation that resulted in the lift. Or that the lift resulted in. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, some days maybe I didn't get that much sleep. Maybe I wasn't that hydrated. Or maybe just for reasons unknown, I was just kind of like out of it. I'm not just going to not go hard. I'm still going to push it because that's uh, that's my deal but you know some lifts subcon or uh, subjectively just feel a little bit better than others but it's probably more important to go hard on 
well, you got to go hard on all of them, <laughs> but it's probably more important to go hard on the days where you're not really feeling it. Because if you go easy on those days, and I mean, come on, what's, uh, it's like, do you only want to lift when everything is perfectly prepared? You know, you gotta, you gotta see how you perform when the odds are against you. That's, uh, it's kind of just classic fucking motivational jargon. So, plan for tomorrow is going to be cardio in the morning, obviously, and then I'll go to my one class, then I get to come home and chill before I go do back. Perfect day. Perfect freaking day. Uh, I will, I was thinking this to myself during this lift, I think I'm going to split up shoulders. Because, uh, I mean, today I did 24 sets Actually, no, I did 32 sets total, because uh, I did calves at the end, too, but that, that doesn't really count. Uh, but So 32 sets total. No, no, what am I? 24, because I had to do chest, and then side delts and rear delts. And tomorrow, when I do back, I'm only going to do 8 sets, because all I'm doing is 8 sets for back. So I think, you know, there's no, there's no real reason why I do side delts and rear delts together, apart from the fact that they're part of the shoulder. So I think it'll even out my workload in the workouts if I do um, rear delts with back and then just side delts today with chest. So I think that's how I'll change it up, just to uh, just for an even spread. Because you don't want I uh, you don't want to have one day where you do a ton of muscle groups at once and then another day where you only do one. You know I think an even mix of uh, let's just say effort is probably in your best interest. Because you know, I used to do the Arnold split for a while, where it would be uh, legs, chest, and back, and then arms. Legs. Yeah, exactly. But I would do chest first on chest and back day, and the chest pump was killer. I was fresh. It was sweet. But then by the time I got to back, I mean, it was just kind of too much. You know, I don't mind uh, accessory movements like that. Like today, I finished chest. That was the big muscle. That really kind of tired me out, and then shoulders are you know, smaller. It doesn't. It's not so. Uh, it doesn't require so much. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Exertion, on my end. It's more so just going for a burn. Like I don't have to. I'm not really too out of breath after any sets of rear delts or side delts, and maybe sometimes with the side laterals on with the dumbbells. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. So chest and back was too much, so I decided to split them up. And then I think just as a kind of a time thing, you know, I was in there for about an hour and a half. Whereas when I do back, it'll probably only take me 40 minutes. So if I do back and rear delts after today, which would hypothetically become chest and side delts, then it'd be more like an hour each. And that pretty much balances it out pretty well, I think. So I, uh, my parents went to a Japanese market I got a bunch of fancy sushi, and so I asked, uh, I mean, I can't be inhaling sushi right now because it's got a ton of carbs from the rice, but I had them get a little tuna steak. So I think I'll just cut that up sashimi style, dip it in some soy sauce with some wasabi, and that'll be a solid source of, uh, solid source of protein without too much fat. Uh, I guess, I mean, maybe watch out for eating too much tuna just from mercury. You guys seem to be very concerned uh, maybe not you guys overarchingly, but just I saw a couple of comments that were like, dude, you're eating too much tuna, man. You got to watch out for your mercury. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I had like two servings of tuna on those little tuna sandwiches. I wouldn't really be too concerned with that. But if you're doing like three cans of tuna a day, I, I don't really know the the recommended rate of tuna consumption to stay under that mercury poisoning limit. Uh, so it's... I guess what I'm trying to say is, for all those concerned, don't worry, I'm not eating so much tuna that I'm going to get mercury poisoning. I do a variety of, a very good variety of proteins. So I think that's pretty much all I got to say. I'm sure the back pump tomorrow is going to be crazy if the chest pump and the shoulder pump today are any indication of it. So all I got to do is go to sleep, drink a ton of liquids, and stay under my calorie limit. Uh, ooh, yeah, this light is fucking red, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all I got. Three more, three and a half-ish more weeks of this cut. Then we'll do a little, um, 
well, I, I guess I won't really do anything special. It'll just be a lift when I'm extra cut at the end. And then we can start throwing in the treats. I'm already getting excited for it. So I will see you tomorrow.